today, uh, we will continue our uh, Jitter Measurement Series. And in this part three of the Jitter Measurement Series, we will uh, talk about the uh, cycle-to-cycle jitter and the long-term jitter. Uh, I am Yin Chen Lu, uh, Custom Engineering uh, Senior Manager for Site Times, and I will uh, present uh, today's uh, web webinar. In our previous uh, jitter measurement seminar, uh, we have discussed the uh, period jitter and also the time interval error and phase jitter in the previous uh, two sessions. In this session, uh, we will focus on the cycle cycle jitter and the long term uh, jitter. The cycle to cycle jitter is the difference of one period and its adjacent ones. Uh, it is defined by the three time stamping event of adjacent uh, clock cycles. The cycle to cycle jitters uh, reflects the high, high frequency part of the uh, jitter. It is the difference of two adjacent clock periods and it is dominated by high frequency jitter. It is usually measured by real-time oscilloscope. And we will show uh, the measurement example in the next few slides. Cycle to cycle jitter is not sensitive to low frequency jitter or slow frequency modulation of oscillator frequency. And it is often used to specify jitters uh, intrinsic jitter performance of the spread spectrum clocks. And in terminology, cycle to cycle jitter is not the same as the so-called cycle jitter. The cycle jitter is actually the same as the period jitter. In this slide, we are showing the Cox uh, cycle to cycle jitter in a spread spectrum clock. As you can see on the screenshots of a real-time oscilloscope for C, uh, C2C jitter measurement, the one on the left is with the spread spectrum disabled. And the one on the left is with the spectra, spread spectrum enabled. This is measuring the cycle-to-cycle -cycle jitter of a spread spectrum uh, oscillator at 125 megahertz with a 2% down spread. As you can see, the C2C jitter does not show significant difference between the two modes. The C2C jitter is not sensitive to low frequency phase noise or the low frequency modulation of the spectrum clock mode. Now let's move on to the long-term jitter. The long-term jitter is the variation of the timing intervals between the first edge in the last edge of n consecutive clock cycles. This is also known as the accumulated jitter or the so-called n cycle jitter. Sometimes the long-term jitter can be specified by the accumulation time of n cycle. For example, a long-term jitter of 100 microseconds for a 100 megahertz clock means the n equal to 10,000 clock cycles. The next example, for a 62.5 megahertz clock, the long-term jitters of accumulation time of 10 microseconds, meaning the n cycle equal to 625 clock cycles. The long-term jitters, in contrast to the C2C jitter, it is sensitive to low frequency phase noise integrated over long accumulation times. And the formula in this slide also reveals the relationship between the long-term jitter and the time, TIE, timing jitter, or the period jitters. To observe the long-term jitter on a real-time scope, here we are showing a, an example of a 125 megahertz clock. By setting the trigger delay, 
between zero microsecond or trigger delay of 100 microseconds, we can graphically show in the long-term jitters in the oscilloscope displays. The screenshot on the left is with the trigger delay set to zero microseconds. And as you can see, this is equivalent to the period jitter display where you have very little jitter uh, displayed on the red circle part of the uh, rising edge of the waveforms. On the other hand, the screenshots on the right with trigger delay set to 100 microseconds, you can see there's accumulated time of 100 microseconds of long-term jitters. And it is, it is showing a uh, significantly higher jitter than the period jitter. The long-term jitter measurement setup with a real-time oscilloscope is showing in the slides here. With the oscillator output uh, directly connected to the real-time oscilloscope with a 50 ohm coax cables. When measuring long-time jitter with real-time oscilloscope, the oscilloscope uh, should have a low time base error and the oscilloscope setting should be optimized to reduce the measurement error, which is following most of the uh, guideline that we have discussed in the previous uh, webinar on the period jitter measurement. Here we want to point out is high sampling rates uh, of real-time oscilloscope in long-term jitter measurement increases the sample size and slow down the jitter measurement significantly. So the best tool to use for long-term jitter measurement is usually not the real-time oscilloscope. And we're going to introduce this type of uh, test equipment called time interval analyzer in the next slides. The time interval analyzer is based on counter timer approach. It can achieve a high equivalent time base resolution in sub picosecond range, while its sampling rate on the input clock signal is much lower than the real time scope. This way, the TIA can achieve a faster long term jitter measurement, especially for long accumulation times. The TIA can also be used for serial link diagnostics and compliance testing. And this is side times uh, jitter measurement setup uh, for long term jitter measurement. Here is an example of the long term jitter measurement uh, using a TIA. The TIA model we use to capture this measurement screenshot is the Wavecrest SIA-4000. Here, we can, we would like to point out is, uh, we set the test equipment's uh, parameter to corresponding to the end cycle of 2500 for a 25 megahertz clock. This, equivalent, this is equivalent to setting the accumulation time for the long-term jitter measurement at 100 microseconds. As you can see from the calculations showing in the slides. The screenshots from the instrument showing the accumulation time as 100.0 399 microseconds and it's showing a RMS and the peak to peak value of the long term jitters at 100 microsecond accumulation time. So which application would care about the long term jitter? Here we mentioned the application that require synchronization of timing events over relatively long time interval or over many clock cycles will require certain long-term jitters performance. Example of these applications are analog and digital video.
also DDR for achieving the face locking in DDR interface for the memory. In a typical digital video or analog video processing, the each processing frame start at the zero trigger time event. As the processing going through many pixels and elements in in the frame for processing. At the end of the frame, which is many clock cycle after the initial triggering, has to remain in low jitter condition for the processing to achieve its best performance. Now we come to our summary for today's webinar. The C2C jitters reflect the high frequency jitter of the clock signal. And the C2C jitter is not sensitive to slow frequency modulation of a spread spectrum uh, oscillator. The long-term jitter defined by the accumulation time or by end cycle is sensitive to low frequency phase noise. Application cares about long-term jitter when multiple timing events need to be synchronized over a relatively long time interval. For questions, you can contact SciTime Technical Support and go to SciTime website for more technical and application notes materials. Thank you.